Well, we're about a month out from a four-year anniversary of Bushiroad releasing arguably their worst set ever. Premium, as my lore viewers know, is my favorite format, but there's a premiere set that really set into motion a lot of positives and some negatives we're still trying to recover from. Premium Collection 2019 absolutely warped the format, propelling the late G support and new V support for the respective 24 clans far forward. However, these seven jerks just took it a little too far. And when I mean too far, I mean way too far. Let's start with a girl that had to get emergency banned in Ichi 2. This card absolutely changed OTT, as it made it an instant top tier deck on release and was on a warpath to be set up as one of the best decks for the next few seasons, before she met her demise. This card changed how OTT was able to finish, and had its ability to gain resources. That being said, I don't see a world where this card ever comes back. Now let's move on to the big three that eventually formed after this Premium Collection 2019's release, in Neo Nectar Plant Tokens, Gold Paladin Ezel, and Dark Irregular NLK due to Katrina, Spear X, and Steel Deal Manus propelling these decks to the top of the meta. Neo Nectar's strong grade 2 game was the premiere of this deck, as the plant token makers would conserve you hand in the moment of the game and generate strong numbers, allowing you to push your opponent to 3-4 to four damage and forcing them to ride up. This would give you the green light to stride into Katrina and win the game. While this deck and game plan was strong, the most broken aspect of Katrina is it does not cast a counterblast, which means it's uncounterable via damage denying and it only pluses the user with a free board. While it only hasn't been game breaking thus far this Spring Fest season, the unbanning of Katrina will continue to be monitored as the strong V plant token support after its ban and the improvements to plant tokens as standard will continue to support this card for a long time. Next was Spear X. While not broken in a vacuum and pretty easily damage deniable, what made this card really strong was Ezel's ability to double spear cross thanks to G Wonder Ezel and set up Platina combos, and it only got better after the introduction of Excel 2s, which these new Excel circles would draw cards and made G Wonder Ezel even stronger, especially when the little bugger was hit in the top 5 of Spear Cross's check top 5 skill and the deck's consistency to high roll got unbelievably higher. Finally is Gastille. While NLK was already kicked in the shin with the Limit of Assassin and made the NLK deck stronger, it was how DI's design V that made Gastille problematic. If you go back and look at all of DI's VRs, all of them are Vanguard centric and have very strong skills. NLK decks became NLK Brufus decks, and with Brufus's control skill and soul buffing, it made the deck fairly consistent. Shahara increased the power of the front row and made Diamantis' front row buffing skill even stronger and added multi-attack to the rear guards. And the final straw was Gastille's grade 3 rechain, essentially becoming a free damage pring, unguardable attacks due to turning off G guards and sentinels, and multiple 2 crit attacks on your opponent's 1 power vanguard when paired with Shahara. While Gastille's ban was called way before that last version of the deck, the nail in the coffin to Gastille was his grade 3 counterpart. This deck, though, unfortunately limits Dark State's overdress design implementation for premium, as it would be awesome to see some greed on goodness inside DI, but it's for the better, as this boogeyman was absolutely busted. However, there's a little few rogue picks in Mega Colony Gridora and Shadow Paladin Luar that cemented their competitive viability in 2019 strides when they were added in Grade 4 Gridora and Grade 4 Morfessa. Gridora is still sometimes called for bans, as its ability to turn off G-Guardians and board wide stun is extremely difficult to play against, as Mega Colony has some of the best resource management in this game. Gridora was one of two pieces, last Spring Fest format that absolutely dominated. Order Colony was a consistent machine, and displayed how powerful Mega Colony would be with a card draw engine. However, as bad as an argument I'm about to make is, it's really true. Without Gridora, in the stride, Mega Colony does not do much, and the stride is kind of the glue for this clan that has almost no identity in V, and its G zone without Gridora is kind of lackluster. This is why I believe this card will dodge the ban list for a few more years to come. On the flip side, Morfessa made Luard a considered option for the big three meta of Katrina, Ezel, and NLK, as the deck was insanely toolboxy, had amazing grade ones printed in V, and made Dogda even better with the plus 15k plus one crit battle door guard restriction, as it showed the power of turn wide guard restrictions, and was the first persona ride style of effect we see in standard today. Not to mention that the deck had a really strong grade 2 game with the addition of Morian Spear for a few formats and continued to be a strong contender until more power creep and interactive G-Guards checked Morfessa and Luard, having it unfortunately fall out of the meta. 
While that was it for really obvious glaring cards, there's a final card I'd like to cover in this video, and one that continues to potentially maybe a problem in my eyes. Pale Moon's Dark Lord Princess is as free as Katrina, due to other Magia strides you have access to in Pale Moon, generate an insane board presence and accelerate your GB count and allow you to have very high scaling turns. This card made Harry easily in the Big Six format a contender, and competitively viable with insane tech lines as high as almost a 14, and still continues to hold Nightmare Dolls up to the same pace as some of these current decks in the format. Boosterwood will still have to be careful though in designing new strides for Pale Moon especially if they have the Magia keyword, as the ability for Dark Lord Princess to abuse the future support should always be on the R&D team's mind. While Premium Collection 2019 set into motion the current premium format I love and enjoy, those seven cards presented some strong problems during their lifetime, and some even received the ban hammer. While this card themselves were strong and enjoying them was fun, they were far from future proof, which I mean, they should be. Cards shouldn't have to be that game breaking, but cards should get older as time goes on. If you enjoy this type of content, please support me by ordering with Kingslayer cards and use the code SCHOLAR to save 5% on your checkout. Please like, share, and comment what you think is the most broken stride out of Premium Collection 2019, and don't forget to click that subscribe button. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your week. I love you all, and take care.